Welcome to the audio guide to Watertight Marketing, the book by Bryony Thomas, the invaluable book by Bryony Thomas. And well done for picking this up. So I'm Alan Stevens. I'm somebody who helps people communicate. I'm known as the media coach. And I'm very, very privileged and pleased to be able to talk to Bryony on this audio guide to help you understand all about Watertight Marketing. So let me ask Bryony to introduce herself. Thanks, Alan. Yes, I'm Bryony Thomas, the author of said book. Um, first came out in 2013 um, when I was a little way into my marketing career, which started in 1997. Um, so I started doing charity fundraising for ActionAid um, and rather fell in love with marketing, really. Um, ended up doing, I was the senior account manager for Microsoft in the UK for tech uh, marketing agency Mason Zimbler. I left there and did a little stint via Lloyd's TSB. And then the role, uh, my kind of big corporate role before I went out on my own was director of marketing for Experian Marketing Services mm -hmm. in the UK, doing sort of big data, um, data analytics type stuff. And then in 2008, I set up on my own um, and I found that I was drawing all the same pictures, telling the same stories. And myself and my colleague Cheryl were, were offering consulting services. And we just, we, we couldn't keep up. We were, we had about kind of three inquiries for every one that we could serve. Mm -hmm. And I thought if I wrote it down, I could at least give them a book um, to, to go and yeah. do some stuff themselves. So that's how the, the book was, was born um, in 2013, updated it all in, in 2020. And uh, yeah, I've been asked for an audio book constantly since, yeah. which is why we're doing this. Yeah. OK, well, it, a fantastic book it is, too. So obviously people are going to use this, I guess, alongside the book or they, they might decide to buy the book having heard this. It doesn't really matter as long as they as long as they get a lot from it. But how, how can they get the most from it? Brian? What's what's the best way to use this? So I imagine there'll be three types of user. I think there's going to be someone who's um, new to Watertight Marketing, hasn't seen it before. Someone's perhaps recommended the book, but they didn't fancy reading the, it, it's quite a weighty tome. Um, maybe listening is more their thing. Go on dog walks or whatever and want mm -hmm. to just uh, plug it in and listen. Um, and that's great. It's a good introduction to the book. Um, I don't think it replaces it entirely. I think uh, anyone listening to this will at some point want to go and particularly look at the pictures. I think if you've read the book already, um, it would be a good refresher. Um, and, I, you know, we do talk through lots of stuff around and uh, of different angles and different perspectives on the material. So I think even if you've read the book, you'll find it uh, an interesting listen. And then maybe uh, maybe you just absolutely um, love Watertap Market and can't get enough of it and think 13 hours of listening to me talking about it is just top of the pops. <laughs> or maybe not nearly enough. <laughs> exactly okay, that, exactly that's great stuff Brian. It's terrific introduction let's crack on with it before we do that alan oh. um can listeners just know a little bit more about you i know we'll be spending a lot of time in one oh. another's company so it'd be uh, good for them to know just a little bit about you why don't you give us a little summary well thank you very much Brian. thank you for the opportunity i've been i've been around for a little while now um quite long in the tooth i i'm basically involved in in communication issues so my main business is known as media coach and I help people to get their message across uh, on various types of media, radio, TV, the web, whatever. I'm particularly involved in reputation management. So my main uh, line of work is helping people to manage their business, to build and protect their reputation, as I say. And that includes things like building a reputation from scratch, making sure your reputation is enhanced on a regular basis, and most importantly these days, recovering from a crisis. So if people get themselves into difficulties, as can happen through no fault of their own sometimes, I and mean, if it is their own fault, we come out and say it's their fault. But if it's not, we come out and say, uh, what's the best way to recover from this? So basically, I'm all about helping people to have the best possible reputation they can, including your good self, Brian. And you have a stellar reputation already, and I think it'll only be enhanced by this book and this audio guide. Thanks, Alan. And I thought you have a lovely voice and you'd be the perfect person for the job. So I hope our listeners agree. Thank you very much. So, Bryony, you talk about a, a VA company, a, a fiction VA company, obviously called Vavoom. Tell us a bit about that. Yes. So Vavoom do not exist. Um, what do they say on films? Uh, this is entirely fictional. Any resemblance to a real business, operational or defunct, is purely coincidental. Mm -hmm. um, I do understand that since I came up with Vavoom in 
2011, whenever it was I was writing, there is now a company called Vavu. Maybe they bought the book and just and got themselves a marketing <laughs> plan. Um, so Vavu is an entirely fictional company. The reason I made a company up is that none of our clients wanted me to share their entire marketing strategy. Who knows why? Mm. Um, and I thought what I would do is kind of combine some of the best things that I've um, seen people do into a company that is readily understandable and so I took a virtual assistant company which is a company that does things like diary management travel management telephone answering dictation services you know th those sorts of things many people will be uh, familiar with a, a virtual assistant service and um, and essentially all the way through the book I've case studied what this fictional company would have done and so every time I've got a framework Every time I've got a key concept, I apply it to this organization. And what I've done at the beginning of the book is to outline who they are so that you can get a sense of it. And I think having something that is completely um, applied through the book really helps bring it to life. I have also got in some, some real companies too. You'd like to know that it's been good, used on good. some real ones as well. Um, but just to make sure that there's that sense of completeness, I went for um, one that I could really go into. And the way I could do that was by, was by making it up. Um, and so they have um, they have three typical groups that they sell to um, small business owners, sole traders and freelancers who need a little bit of admin support, directors and senior managers in larger businesses that don't have dedicated administrative support or people running one uh, kind of one off large projects with a, a peak in admin requirement or looking for that overflow support. Um, and what I've put together is um, assuming that they charge for their services either on a monthly package with, with, with minimum contracts, on a prepay account, or as a bespoke um, costing for a given contract. And in terms of getting a, an idea of the size of the sorts of com the company I have in mind, what they're aiming to go for is going from um, just approaching 700,000 turnover, aiming to push it over the, the 1 million. So mm -hmm. we talk about their strategy for taking it to, uh, to be precise, it's 1.147 million 500. That is precise. It's precise, isn't it? And the reason the precise numbers are there is because I do the measurement piece on them. Um, right. So for anyone who wants to follow that measurement through, it, it's all there. And I talk about there being two founders who go through the book, and they spend 70 hours working through this and they come up with the plan that we come up with um, through the book. So, yeah, just brings it all to life, really. Excellent. Well, that, that'll all become clear as people work through the book, obviously, and uh, become more and more familiar with Vavoom, as long as they don't try and employ anybody from there, because it doesn't really exist. It, indeed, indeed. But I did go so far as to actually brief the designer to create a brand and a set of tone of voice guidelines. Um, and there's every intent. You never know. By the time somebody's actually uh, listening to this, I may have got around to creating the, the pretend website I've always wanted to create. And you know, to bring I, what I'd really like to do is actually create all of the material that we course, scoped yeah. out in here to really bring it all to life. And um, that's that's uh, certainly intended. OK, so that that's Vavoom which people I say become more familiar with as they work through the book. So now we're going to be talking about chapter one. Uh, they're thinking your marketing. So very interesting because in this chapter, you actually, you take the perspective of the decision maker, not the company itself. And that, that's quite intriguing and unusual. So explain to us why you've done that. So the subtitle to chapter one is purposeful pause and active choices. And in many ways, chapter one is about defining or perhaps redefining marketing. A lot of what I do through the book takes a different perspective by turning it upside down, which we will come on to. And here it's about turning it inside out. And what I mean by turning it inside out is that most marketing books take the perspective of the company and say, this is how you make more money. Mm -hmm. um, here are some things that you can do. And I start the book by looking at the buying decision through the eyes of the buyer, because if you can understand the way that decisions are made, then you're more able to affect change on that decision, right. which is which is what um, marketing is essentially about. And in the book, I take the commercial perspective, so from a company selling products and services, but a decision journey could be a decision to join a company as an employee. Mm -hmm. It could be to um, support a charity with um, fundraising efforts or becoming a regular donor or even being a service user. And so understanding the way that decisions are made allows you to see what I call decision journeys. 
Um, and once you've got a, a journey that is a decision, you can map marketing to that. Uh, okay, so I'll, do you think that's a flaw uh, in a lot of companies' marketing where they look at what they're selling rather than how people are buying it? Yes, most people, even when they do marketing research, have a preconceived idea of um, what it is they're selling and they're thinking about ways to position it and ways to um, sell more. Um, and I think actually taking a moment just to take the perspective of the buyer and how we make decisions, a buyer or decision maker. We've all made decisions in our lives. Um, mm -hmm. Some were easy and some were not. And I think taking a moment just to think about the process of decision making, uh, regardless of your product or service, helps you to understand the, um, the way that people do that, who they refer to, what they're thinking, what they're trying to analyze or, or reconcile in their mind. And once you've got that, you've got this sense of a journey and only then should you overlay your perspective on it. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Decision-making as a fundamental and understanding the psychology of that is the starting point.